possibly postponing the country's February 25th presidential election, Senegalese President Macky Sall spoke to the nation Thursday night. He assured the country that April 2nd, 2024, will be the end of his presidency as mandated by the Constitution. But Senegalese political analyst Ibrahim Akan tells me that while Senegalese were trying to digest the president's speech, he failed to address the real concern of the nation, a new date for the postponed election. He said by Monday and Tuesday, a consultation will take place among all the stakeholders and they will propose a date. If the consultation is not able to propose a date, they will refer the matter to the Constitutional Council and the Constitutional Council will decide about the date. So why do you think the president came out to talk without a date for the election? Well, I think what the president is trying to do is really, he doesn't want to take a decision because the decree that convened the people for the February 25, 2024 presidential election was taken by himself without any consultation. As we have been saying, the president's term expires on April 2nd. So who is going to rule the country comes April 2nd? Well, first he confirmed that by April 2, he will be leaving the power. He said if the Monday and Tuesday consultation set a date and that date allow uh, the election of the next president, he will be happy to hand over the power to that president elected. If not, by the 2nd of uh, April, the Constitutional Court will also determine who will be the next president of Senegal. But I just need to take uh, your audience that that issue is already resolved by the, our Constitution. If the president is not there, the president resigns, or there is no longer a president in power, the Speaker of the Parliament replaces the president and will be there for only three months until the new president is elected. The president spoke at night uh, when kind of late there. How do you think Senegalese are going to react to this? The president didn't just talk about the date of the election and his departure. He talked about reconciliation among Senegalese. And for him, reconciliation means we forget and forgive all the wrong that were done in the past. And for that, he promised that the parliament will adopt a law on amnesty. But we don't know yet which period is covered by the amnesty. He also said that uh, through the reconciliation process, Sonko and Jomai Fai will be free. For the time being, people are still trying to digest. But from what I'm hearing, it's a mixed view about what the president said. People are happy to hear the president about all these issues because he was silent. But at the same time, what the president is proposing is not really a solution to the problem that we are experiencing because... We want to know the date of the election, so the administration should sit with the candidate and discuss the date of the election, but he wants to organize a kind of jambore, a kind of dialogue for two days. What can you sort out in two days? Why an outgoing president is really going to organize a kind of consultation for everybody? So I think, for me, part of all this drama was just a kind of way of trying to get a law on amnesty that will help to protect some of the people who did wrong thing during his presidency. Ibrahim Akan is a Senegalese political analyst. He was speaking with us from the capital, Dakar. Malawi President Lastro Chakwera says his administration will not pay a ransom to hackers who have prevented the Department of Immigration and Citizenship Services from uh, printing passports for the past three weeks. Chakwera said in Parliament Wednesday that the cyber attack has compromised the country's security and measures are in place to identify and apprehend the attackers who are demanding millions in ransom. Some analysts, however, doubt the president's statement. Lamek Masina reports from Blantyre. The Department of Immigration and Citizenship Services in Malawi stopped printing passports weeks ago after it announced in January that it was facing technical glitches. The situation left hundreds of passport applicants stranded and rights groups have vowed to hold mass demonstrations if the glitch isn't resolved within days. But on Wednesday, President Lazarus Chakwera told the parliament the suspension is because of what he called digital mercenaries have hacked the immigration system responsible for printing the passports. This 
is a serious national security breach. And though Malawi is not the first in the modern world to be the target of and suffer this kind of cyber attack, we have taken very decisive steps to regain control of the situation. President Chakwera on Wednesday said he gave the Department of Immigration three weeks to provide a temporary solution and resume the printing of passports while it is setting up the system. At that same event, he said that he had told the hackers never to expect ransom from the Malawi government. As long as I'm president, government will never pay the ransom money you have demanded after hacking the system. Because we are not in the business of appeasing criminals with public money, nor are we in the business of negotiating with those who attack our country. Malawi has faced passport insurance challenges since 2021 when the government terminated its contract with Technobrain, which was a supplier of Malawi's passports since 2019. But in 2023, the government re-engaged the company on a temporary basis after it failed to find a replacement. But still, on many occasions, the Department of Immigration had to scale down production because of a shortage of materials or failure to pay outstanding bills to the supplier. Sylvester Namiwa is the executive director of the Center for Democracy and Economic Development Initiatives, whose organization is vowing to hold protests if the situation isn't resolved within days. He told VOA that he doubts the veracity of President Chakwira's statement on the hacking of the system. The president is creating the impression that he's talking to people that are so daft. He should have revealed the identities of the hackers. And uh, in this modern day technology, he should have stated whether they are communicating using what mode. For example, if they are using computers, if they are using phones. Today's technology is easy to trace. Namiwa points to the reports circulating on social media and a local radio station suggesting that the contractor taking a brain deliberately shut down the system after noticing improper activity by suspected government agents. According to the local media reports, Techno Brain is demanding millions of dollars in compensation from the Malawi government before it unblocks the system. Armed groups that have been controlling Libya's capital for more than a decade have agreed to leave. The Interior Minister, who is part of the UN-recognized government, made the announcement on Wednesday. In a press conference, Mr. Trabesh said, from now on, the militia's press is in their headquarters, adding the Libyan government will use them only in exceptional circumstances for specific emissions. He said, once they had left the capital, other cities would follow, noting there will be no more checkpoints and no more armed groups on roads. The deal will see at least five armed groups quit Tripoli by the end of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan on April 9th, including one based in an area where 10 people were killed over the weekend. It comes after a series of deadly clashes in the city in recent months. The militias with whom the government struck a deal are the General Security Force, the Special Deterrence Force, Brigadier 444, Brigadier 111 and the Stability Support Authority. They are not under the direct command of the Libyan government, though their operational independence was granted by a special status conveyed on them in 2021 by the government. The heavily armed and equipped groups who receive public funding would install checkpoints, but they were often involved in fighting each other, including one incident in August which left 55 people killed and nearly 150 injured. Emergency police, city officers and criminal investigators will repress them, Minister Imad Trabeshi said. Policing vast Libya became even more of a challenge following a NATO-backed uprising and an operation which plunged the nation into chores in 2011. 
The country has since been split between rival administrations, the internationally recognized government in the West, led by Italian Prime Minister Abdul Hamid in Tripoli, and an administration in the East run by military strongman Khalifa Haftal. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.